Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Sunday, May 17th. And it's 7.14 a.m. And I was uh, reading my email, as I normally do first thing in the morning. And I have a little something I need to share. First, I'm going to read a scripture. This is in Matthew 25, verses 35 to 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I'll keep listening. There's there's a point to this. You probably think I uh, that you probably don't you don't know what I'm fixing to say. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Okay, I don't need to read the rest. This is my point. If you see a neighbor in need and you take them something, whether it's clothing or food or their son got locked up in prison and you decided you were going to go visit him, do you not think that's... Um, Well, let me just read read the word from the Lord and then I will it'll be easier for me to explain what I'm trying to say I'm not even gonna tell you who said it this is where discernment comes in brothers and sisters when you hear or read a prophecy you need to pay attention to every word because Satan is really slick and he's going to squeeze in that one line to make you believe this is all from the Lord and the Lord is saying this and I don't believe Jesus is going to tell us this. All right. It says in this one paragraph, It is not time to get caught up in all that is going on out there in the world. That is intended to draw us in, and we should rather want to draw into the glory of God. Then we will influence the world going out rather than bringing the world in. Now there, that could be true depending on what you're doing. Okay, let me continue. Make it your ambition in life to live a quiet life. Stop meddling in others' affairs. Mind your own business. Now, when Jesus walked on the earth, did he mind his own business? Now, the very first miracle he did, he wanted to mind his own business. <laughs> he told his mother, when she said, Jesus, they have no more wine. And he said, what business is that of mine? My hour has not yet come. But she said, you, y'all said to the servants, y'all do what he says. Or however they would say it in Arabic. I think they spoke Arabic. But anyway, in other words, he was letting her know, it's not my time to do these things. 
But she was saying, yes, it is. They need more wine. So he told the servants, go fill all these jars up with water. And the jars, as we know, are like six feet tall, very hard to carry. And they went and filled them all up. He said, now draw some out and take it to the wedding master. And the wedding master said, you have given the poor wine first and saved the best for the last. Now, that's not the way you usually do it. <laughs> You're supposed to give everybody the good wine until they're drunk and then give them the rest. They're not so expensive wine. Okay. So, but from that point on, when Jesus saw a need, he met it. He didn't say, I'm not getting involved that's none of my business. Like, you know the neighbors have an arguing. You saw the husband storm out with a suitcase. And you know the wife is alone with the kids. And you want to tell yourself, that's none of my business. You couldn't take a meal over there to her help her feed the kids just to give her a break don't you know she's sitting around crying maybe or you could just take a cake and lend a, a listening ear and perhaps try to witness Jesus healed people he saw hurting he he did all kind of miracles where he had to not mind his own business in order to do them. He, we, he is our example, right? If we stayed at home and make it our ambition to live a quiet life, stop meddling in others' affairs, mind your own business. I read that and I was like, there's no way the Lord is going to tell us that. How are we supposed to spread the gospel if we're minding our own business? That just, I'm like, there's, there's no way that's from the Lord. I just know it in my spirit. So my point here is, and you know, Down here at the end, there's a scripture. John, uh, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Jesus said, John 14, 2. And then it ends with, we need to be working the works. Now, if I'm sitting at home on my own business, I'm not, do, I'm not out there doing works, am I? So... There are so many examples of this I could give you of people saying things, saying the Lord said this. Like I gave you a couple examples yesterday that had to do with the virus. Jesus is not going to tell you you have to plead the blood before you go out like this is so bad that only the blood of the Lamb is going to preserve you. Knowing he knew it wasn't that big of a deal. It's like an annual flu. Nobody stays at home, wears masks. I mean, we should plead the blood of Jesus over ourselves, no matter what. At least once a day. But to imply that it's the only way you're going to not get the virus... Do that before you go out. Or uh, pray Psalm 91 over your family every morning before they leave the house or, or whatever. To me, that's like the Lord is, is, is in on the, the New World Order making you believe it's worse than it is. That's the way I see it. 
and this, then I read this, and I'm like, Satan's all up in all the prophecy, isn't he? Maybe not all, but a lot of it. So I am asking you to please take every word that comes out of the mouth of anybody who says it is from thus saith the Lord and break down every paragraph and think about it. Take it to the Lord because I know the Lord has called me to expose the lies from the truth. And all it takes is one sentence like that for you to stop doing the good works that God has called us to do. And Ephesians 2.10 says, We have been saved to do good works. And it takes meddling in others' affairs sometimes, even if you're just taking a casserole to a neighbor's house because you noticed the father left and you want to just encourage somebody. It sometimes helps to take something in your hands. And isn't that kind of like meddling in somebody's affairs? You're not doing it to find out the details so you can go gossip at your book club. No. That's what a lot of neighbors do. You do it to go lift that person up. And there's a difference. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, The Internet Connection. Myself, my computer, and over each and every one of you, your devices, and your internet connections. And I pray you got my point. Learn to discern, 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 because Jesus said, do not be deceived. That's the first thing he said when the apostles asked. When will these things happen and when will your second coming be? Or however he worded it. He said, take heed that she be not deceived. Okay. Did I say I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you? I'll say it again if I did. And all your devices... And your internet connections. And with that I'll say. Have a beautiful blessed day. Or night. Whenever you see this. Alright. Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.